We are in Shivaji Park. Chhatrapati Shivaji. He revealed in his own character that same spirit. My dear friend Vrindavan Das Prabhu has published and written a beautiful book on the life and teachings of Sant Tukaram. It describes how Tukaram, who was from a lower caste, had such love, such devotion, and such wisdom that even great Brahmins and everyone was aspiring to hear from him, to learn from him, and to serve him. His humility, his character, and the abhangas that he composed and he would sing was transforming the lives of everyone around him. But it's the nature of the world. When people love you, others will envy you and hate you and want to destroy you. Rameshwar Bhatt, he was a Brahmin and a very learned scholar of Vedas. He could not tolerate a lower caste person who was writing these poems. He considered them sentimental and he was misleading the world. He chastised Tukaram with such harsh words. And he told Tukaram, you should take all your abhangas, all your compositions, and throw them in the Indrani River. He sang beautiful song to his beloved Panduranath. And then he wrapped all his books with cloth, his abhangas, and he put some heavy stones on it. And with a prayer of love, he placed it in the river. It went to the bottom, was gone. The devotees were brokenhearted. But the arrogant people considered it a great victory. Santukaram offered beautiful prayers to beloved Krishna Vithoba. And he considered himself to be so fallen. He was so humble. He sat on a rock to fast. Thirteen days passed when the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna appeared to him and told him he was going to return all the abhangas, all of the compositions. And they rose from the bottom of the Indrani River, floating on the top, and the devotees swam out and brought them and brought them to Tukaram, and they were in absolutely perfect condition. And even Rameshwar Bhatta became a disciple due to the experiences that he encountered. When Chhatrapati Shivaji heard about this, how after 13 days of being underwater, the Abhangas came to the top of the river. He wanted to meet the saint, so he sent messengers with the royal umbrella and a royal horse to bring Tukaram to his palace. And he composed a beautiful prayer Though, O Pandaranath, why are you tempting me like this? Why are you giving me things I don't like? I don't want royal umbrellas. I don't want to meet materialistic people. I only want to chant your names and serve you. I don't see a difference between an ant and a king. I don't see a difference between an ordinary pebble on the ground and pure gold. The only thing that has any value to me is loving devotion to you and the beautiful sound of your holy names. He sent those beautiful poems to Chhatrapati Shivaji. And Shivaji came to the home that Tukaram was residing. He bowed to him. The king bowed to this simple sage, humble sage. He gave him garlands of tulsi and garlands of flowers, and he offered him gold and wonderful royal gifts. Tukaram said, the only thing I want 
is that you constantly chant Krishna's names. And we're the Kanti Mala. Nothing is meaningful in this world except pure devotion. Anyone can say these things. But when somebody lives it and believes it, it has a great power. Chhatrapati Shivaji took off his crown and put it on the floor. I don't want this. He wore simple clothes. He went into the forest and just performed japa and bhakti throughout the entire day in seclusion. And in the evenings he would come back to join the kirtan of Tukaram and all the devotees. He was completely detached and completely happy. But his mother was in great distress. There's no king, <laughs> and he doesn't even have children yet. His mother came to Tukaram, and she was crying. She said, I'm, I'm the queen mother of the king, and now he's given up his duties, and he's living like a, a simple sadhu who's going to rule the kingdom. So that evening, when Shivaji came from the forest, Tukaram gave a, gave a talk to all the devotees about the importance of following one's dharma. This is the basic principle of Sri Bhagavad Gita. If we have deep attachment to sadhus, deep attachment to the holy names, if we live with character, without hypocrisy, without cheating others, if we have Krishna in the center of our life, some Siddhir Hari Toshanam, then we will attain perfection of life by performing our prescribed Dharma. After hearing this, Shivaji put his crown back on. He bowed to Tukaram's lotus feet and bowed to his mother's lotus feet and went back to serve the citizens in the spirit of what he learned from his guru. So here we have the story of two great kings, Prataparudra and Tukaram, and their example is teaching the same lesson, that everything is the property of Sri Krishna, Jagannath. And everything we do should be in the service of Jagannath. Whether we're in business, whether we're in engineering, whether we're farmers, whether we're educators, whether we're kings or whether we're swamis. And that is the spirit of Ratayatra, that everyone from every nation, from every caste, from every religion, educated or uneducated, from every type of occupation, we all come together as one family with appreciation and respect that everyone is a beloved child of Sri Krishna. For Lord Jagannath, the only thing is high that is our love, not our material condition. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought the whole world together at Ratha Yatra to join hearts while we chant the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. In Srila Prabhupada, in the spirit of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's supreme compassion, he brought the mission of pure devotional service, the spirit of Vrindavan throughout the world, and he established Rathiatras. not only in ev almost every city, but in places like Mumbai, so many Rathiatras <laughs> in cities. And in doing so, bringing all of us together to chant, to dance, to hear Harikata, to take Krishna's prasadam. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.